Cool. So we're at five after Frederick. Um, you want me to go ahead and share and we can get going? Yeah, let's do it. Cool. There's the share. <clears throat> Great. So welcome to the next network, ah, to today's network service uh, mesh meeting. <laughs> it is also the next. Uh, so before we get started, uh, please make sure that you add your name to the agendas list. Um, so as always, um, let's do a little bit of uh, agenda bashing. So is there anything that anyone would like to discuss that is not on the uh, meeting? Uh, I would like to ask, is it possible that during the KubeCon, uh, we, we we hold some kind of, I don't know, meeting or meetup, I don't know what's the proper word for, for this, but kind of who, whoever visits there and is somehow participating in the project to, to sit together and talk a little bit through the project. I know that the birds of feather sessions, but maybe so I, I, I would say absolutely. What we've historically done in the past um, in places where network service missions had a presence, and we just haven't gotten the wiki page updated, sorry, the, the, you know, the, the events page on our website updated for this, is um, typically we, you know, th there are sort of two kinds of get-togethers that I would describe there. One is the we actually get together and we try and hammer some things out, sort of a working session. I think that's super important, and we'll see if we can try and find out a place to do that. Uh, typically, KubeCon has some sort of semi-public spaces for this kind of stuff where you can, you know, you, you, you don't get privacy, but you can get a bunch of people together around a table and hash things out. We'll probably take advantage of that. The other one that we've traditionally done in the past is to do uh, an NSM happy hour. So we, you know, find a nearby bar in an evening and we basically say, hey, if you're interested in network service mesh, um, you know, come by here for NSM happy hour. And we, we tend to get pretty good attendance at those as well. Um, with folks turning up and, and sort of just kibitzing about network service mesh. So I expect we'll probably do both, but I think what you're saying is, could you please bloody well get your event page up soon so that we can all see where we're going? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I need it mostly for scheduling because, uh, you know, you have to plan these events, otherwise you get lost at some point. So. No, and, and I, I, I do apologize. Um, I know most people actually do plan and schedule as a sort of a matter of personal proclivity. I don't. And this makes me less than, it makes it less than obvious to me that I need to get these things out there. So um, this is super cool. Let's go ahead and uh, take an action item <clears throat> for getting the uh, site updated. Um, actually, question, do you want to, Nikolai, uh, sort of cut your teeth a little bit on, on updating the network service mesh site? It, it is just another Git repo. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let me go ahead and, and take down action items. Didn't need to do that bold. Um, yeah, so if you want to go ahead and, and update that, you can see where the other event pages are. Um, hey, uh, Ed, if you could add me as well, I'm not sure if I'm already there, but uh, in terms of hacking up the uh, network mesh uh, uh, site. Sure. Um, let's see. Nicolay. Is that, is that how I pronounce your name, Nicolay? Nicolay? Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. Okay, cool. Perfect. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Good. Awesome. Cool. So I think we were on agenda bashing, Frederick? That's right. So um, is there anything that, uh, that is not on the agenda that uh, people would like to discuss? All right. Cool. OK. In that scenario, uh, let's go down the list of events. So we have the FIDO Mini Summit on December 10th, which is going to have two discussions, one of them by Arroyo Networks and the other one by Tom Herbert. Uh, 
And so that is going to be co-located at KubeCon. Uh, KubeCon uh, is from December 10th through 13th. And we have two, uh, two sessions that we're going to hold. One is an intro to network service mesh. And the other is a network service mesh deep dive. So uh, we are actively working on a network service mesh demo. And simultaneously, we're looking for any media or anything that uh, people can put out there. Uh, I guess you say like blog posts or videos or source uh, podcasts or so on uh, that people want to uh, produce and start getting them out there so that we can have them ready for KubeCon. And we also have a, uh, well, rather, there is an event called FOSDEM which is, has a networking dev room on February 2 through 3. And the call for papers for that is listed in the agenda. Uh, remind me where FOSDEM is. Was, was, it in, was it in Brussels or? I, I, something in my gut wants to, tell, wants to say Amsterdam. I don't remember specifically though. Um, but I, I know they hold it the same place every year. It is Brussels. Brussels. Oh, it is Brussels? OK. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, I think call for papers is over now. Maybe that's the lighting tools are still active. But, uh... Uh, I think the call for papers is still open for FOSDEM for uh, at least my calendar for a little less than a, than a week uh, for, okay. the, for the, the networking dev room because each dev room holds its own CFP. And so we have oh, yeah. uh, oh, Fred, a quick, a quick uh, a question um, sure. on the FDIO mini summit, uh, Ed, and we had spoken about this in the path, path, uh, past, there's going to be a, a demo um, place or location or time. Now this, again, this is the FDIO. Mini yeah, summit. so I mean, this actually, this, this, it's not so much the FDIO mini summit. So um, the, the FDIO, FIDO, has a booth at KubeCon. Um, and one of the things that they will be highlighting there at that booth is a demo of network service mesh. Now, I expect that demo will be a little bit more of rah, rah, look at the good things that, that BPP and FIDO do in the network service mesh context, you know, because it is their booth. Um, but there, there should be demos there. Um, okay. Okay, very good. Uh, as you know, we were uh, going to demo or, or assembling an app to show a another VPP uh, specific app. So um, I'd like to have some sort of visible tie-in or at least a little nod uh, to NSM uh, as part of that. Yeah, no, I think a lot of things when you're ta doing things like this that cross multiple boundaries become a question of emphasis, right? So for example, um, in the FIDO booth, obviously you would want to tell people why they care about network service mesh and then why FIDO is awesome in that context, right? In different environments, you, you might be much more focused on network service mesh and you might not focus so much on the FIDO piece. Okay. Um, you know, so I think it's more a matter of emphasis because we, we, we're doing a lot of good stuff together. Okay. Hey, and uh, back to the blog post, I guess on item 411, a couple of things real quick. So um, I've got a couple of blog uh, content streams that we could pursue. I had sort of done one initially with CNFs and Legato and VPP. Um, Frederick, I know there's the, uh, the 12 factor apps. And by the way, I'm, I'm way more uh, fluent in Hugo right now. So I don't know if you saw the uh, format of that, but I would be happy to uh, uh, to pursue another template to make it more uh, compelling. But that would also be something I think we'd want to at least point towards and maybe even summarize um, in sort of a separate uh, blog. So there's a number of things going on, at least in this content. And so I'll reach out to the team separately to just uh, uh, figure out the best way to assemble some of this material quickly and ready for KubeCon. Cool. Yeah, that sounds great to me. So any help in that area is definitely uh, greatly appreciated. Yeah. I mean, one, one thing I would point out at Chris is I know a whole bunch of us are typically on the IRC channel. So yep. you want to call people out there uh, when you got some Okay. Product. That's Bad fine. Off. I'll take, I'll do uh, that uh, route. Thank you. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Um, so cool. Back to you, Frederick. <laughs> well, is there, uh, are there any announcements that anyone has that uh, um, our announcement 
The uh, list for today is looking a little bare. Okay, no announcements. Let's jump straight into the uh, main agenda. So uh, as of yesterday, we now have a faster and lower cost continuous integration system. So uh, in effect, we've done a couple things. Number one is we've made use of packets. They have a, uh, they have a few images that are on, I guess you would call them fast boot. Uh, and so they, these are instances that spin up in under a minute. And so simultaneously, we also ended up uh, uh, using uh, Cube Admin to do the initial install on them, which uh, brought our entire build system time down from what was originally around 20 minutes to between five and six minutes. Um, so for the people on, uh, from Volk, I also have some uh, feedback for you later on that I think would be uh, useful because I would like to eventually move back to using the cross cloud stuff. Uh, so I'll catch up with you later on so I can, I can tell you some of the findings that I had and uh, what drove this particular, this particular path. So uh, anyway, so if you, if you, um, if you commit anything uh, simultaneously, it's also, it's also driving the uh, the packet uh, our make machinery. So if you go into uh, the repository, if you go into the Git repository uh, and you check it out, mm -hmm. and you type make packet start, uh, and after you've created a, a variable, I guess you would take an answer file, and I'll put the template up for that pretty soon. Then, uh, and you just fill out like the token and so on. Then it'll also spin up a system that's ready for, for your test to run. So I'll write some documentation on how to run, and how to run the tests. And uh, it's the same machinery that also drives the um, uh, the local cube admin, the local vagrant, uh, and ideally it will also be the same machinery we use to drive uh, other clouds as uh, as well from command lines. So you could do like make GCE start, or eventually you'll be able to like make AWS start or so on. Um, okay, so um, straight into, so we're going to go into the, right now we're using a different board. So historically we have the agenda board. Right now we've switched because of the uh, focus of the community. We're focusing on the KubeCon demo project board. So board number two. So uh, let's start with the things that are, that are done. So we have, uh, starting from the beginning, uh, made some fixes in terms of uh, in, in terms of some of the code. Uh, a big a big entry has been the VPP data plane with a MIF mechanism. Uh, Ed, your name is on that. Do you want to uh, talk about that a little bit? Well, I'm actually not. I'm the one who filed it, but I'm not the one who did it. Um, so that was actually done by um, that was actually done by Ilya, I believe. Oh, yes. Hi. Cool. Do you, uh, would you be up for giving like a, a very short description on uh, what the MIF mechanism is for people on call? Uh, yes. Uh, MIF mechanism, um, it creates a file for, a socket file for client and for endpoint. Uh, and if we have direct uh, we don't use uh, VPP if, uh, I mean, both sides uh, have MEMIF, they choose MEMIF. And if they choose one side, uh, for example, kernel and other side is uh, MEMIF, uh, so that we will create MEMIF in VPP. And uh, now it all uh, works fine. Uh, and so I'm working on the uh, VPP based endpoints and the VP based clients and points is almost finished, I think. And I hope I fixed some issues from PR. Yeah, and that, that's good because then we can run sort of end to end um, MIF connectivity and we have sort of templates for people who want to build, you know, more complicated network service endpoints than an ICMP responder. Um, but God knows ICMP responders are handy. Uh, yes. Um, that's all I think. Great. Cool. 
Um, so we've already covered the NSMCI. Uh, we also have removed uh, the requirement for huge pages for the VPP container, which will make running your uh, container a bit easier. Now uh, we've uh, added a script um, for Vagrant to ease the creation of local, local Kubernetes uh, that is suitable for network service mesh. So this is also part of the machinery that, uh, that I spoke about before. And finally, we're now exposing a monitor cross-connect service northbound from NSMD. Um, Ed, is, is that appropriate for the monitoring stuff that uh, we were talking about last week? That, that's exactly specifically for the monitoring stuff. Um, so that was, that was work that, that Andre Sobolov did. And um, effectively what it means now is in principle, and again, you never know till the integration test is finished. In principle, we should now be exposing northbound um, you know, cross connect events um, so that can be consumed by the skydive integration. But probably even more interesting for the guys doing the skydive integration is in that commit, there is a super well done um, test that stands up essentially a mock server that will just emit events for testing purposes. And uh, if, you've, if the skydive folks follow that example, it should make it super, super easy uh, for them to do the development of their integration. Nice. And so, is there any uh, documentation, or like, how how are we going to transfer the uh, the knowledge to the skydive people? Uh, so I, I've I, I've been pointing the skydive. There's an issue for this where I've captured much of the information about the skydive integration, um, and I've also got, and I think it's linked in the issue. This is in the in progress column. I've also got a, a cute little slide deck that walks through some of the answers to the questions that they were asking in IRC, uh, which we can talk about after we talk about the board at this time. Okay, well, um, go ahead and add it to the uh, bottom of the agenda then. Um, great. And so uh, we have, um, we also have uh, two patches that are currently in review. Uh, one of them is to enable the VX LAN mechanism in the VPP data plane, uh, which means that we're on the way to having a remote uh, cross connect. And uh, we've, there's also a uh, VPP agent based uh, ICMP responder. And so I'm um, not quite sure what that means. Uh, can, I'll, uh, let's see who is on this. Uh, Ilya, yeah, I'll let you discuss. Uh, I uh, can explain uh, what does it mean with a based uh, endpoint. Uh, as I find out, uh, this endpoint that expose uh, a VPP agent. Uh, for example, uh, you can have some kind of stuff in VPP. It has, it's over VPP. I mean, endpoint has over VPP agent. And uh, we can connect with the agent from client, for example, to the agent from endpoint and create cross connect between them, if I have correct understanding. And yep. You yep, no, you're, you're, you're good. And I, I, I've already gone through and reviewed that there was basically just, you know, one small bit. So hopefully that'll go in very shortly. Nice. So, is this uh, specifically an ICP re ICMP responder, where instead of being in the pod, the VPP agent itself is the one that uh, that responds, or rather, so this is a different VPP agent. So basically, effectively, they're, they're, the VPP agent is literally just a VPP instance together with something that exposes gRPC to control it. Right. Okay. So in the data plane, we use a VPP agent. In the v ICMP VPP agent ICMP responder it uses a completely distinct instance of VPP agent running in its own pod in order to provide the ICMP response. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> yeah, and, and, and this is, you know, you know, super, super convenient because right now it's doing ICMP response, but if you wanted to have it do something more complicated and VPP does many, many, many more complicated things, uh, you've got a good template to start from. 
Great. So what I'm so what I'm hearing is that uh, right now it's an ICMP responder, but it's also going to be the basis for a VPP agent that you can then use to create network surface endpoints on that do things other than the cross connect in the in the data plane. Is, is that is that a good description? Yeah, it's basically the basis for writing uh, network service endpoints that are using VPP inside themselves. Nice. Cool. Well. And uh, we have uh, multiple things in progress. Um, I'm not going to go over too much of them unless someone wants to drive uh, drive into them. Uh, we are implementing a remote network um, service client using NSMD. Uh, there is a so of course one of the things that uh, that we definitely need to talk about is the skydive integration uh, a bit more. And is that something we want to do now, or is that something we want to talk about when uh, in your slides that did you have uh, next to the agenda? I, I'd say that's mostly up to David and Matthew. Uh, they're the guys doing, you know, sort of leading the charge there. And you know, if they want to go ahead and drill into that a little bit, I'm perfectly delighted to. Okay, well, it's up to um, some of the skydive people. Do you want to? Have do you, have, do you want to have a discussion on it right now, or do you want to uh, talk about it later on? Uh, I don't know if David is uh, is uh, present here, but uh, we started. Uh, I'm, I've been starting uh, developing a, a client that will be uh, in the future uh, the the probe hosted in Skydive, uh, based on uh, on the recent patches uh, upstream by um, uh, I don't know upstream Aido, I think. Uh, and uh, it's really useful and should not be so hard to have a, a, a probe for, uh, for Skydive based on those de 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 development. Um, what we have to focus on is uh, the architecture. You started a, a, a document on that, Ed. Oh, uh, cool. Did you stick the link to that? Are you talking about the, the slides I put together or is that something different? Yes. That you uh, talked about with I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't with call that an architecture per se. It was more of a waving my hands wildly trying to explain what was going on. <laughs> but yes. Okay, so we, we need some kind of uh, sequence diagram to to mm -hmm. uh, to agree on the call flow. Uh, it would be really useful. And I think, uh, especially, David, uh, I think David uh, may have started drawing such a diagram. Right. Uh, so if if David, if you could you know, if you could share that here as well, and if you could stick it in the issue, because uh, you you've done a super good job of tracing out the sequence of events. Uh, oh, okay. And uh, by the way, may I ask some questions about the slide you draw yesterday? Sure. One second. Let me actually bring them up. Uh, uh, yeah. Can we? <laughs> so. Hey, uh, while you're bringing them up, and um, yeah, I would agree, we absolutely need some sort of architecture picture. Um, th this may be part of it, uh, Ed, and thank you so much for uh, uh, helping uh, craft these up yesterday and answer some of David and myself's question. But um, yeah, we, we need something because there's a lot of terms uh, flowing around here. And I, I, I just, I don't personally have context as to where these pieces are. So Whoever uh, talked about the call flow, be happy to work with you to, uh, uh, to make sure that there's uh, at least some visuals um, on what we're doing uh, for KubeCon and certainly what we're doing moving forward with Skydive. Yeah. And, and so you, you, you had some, you know, I think we may have jumped ahead of the side of the agenda effectively. Uh, do you mind, David, if I do a, just a quick run through them for the benefit of the rest of the call and then we can get your question? Uh, okay, so uh, can, can we jump to the last slide? Uh, the question, David, was do you mind if I do a quick run through for everybody else in the call and then we can get to the questions? Oh, okay. Cool, cool. So um, real quickly, th this was a, a slide deck that I put together because David pinged me on IRC yesterday and was asking a bunch of questions and I realized that pictures are gonna be really super helpful. Um, and so one of the things that I realized is that there needed to be clarity about the fact that there are different ways to look at the topology, right? So if you look at it from the point of view of a network service client or a network service endpoint, the, the world really looks like this, right? Network service client has a local connection. We mark local connection in our 
uh, legend, has a local connection, you know, some kind of thing happens, it doesn't know what, it doesn't care. Um, and there's a local connection from the network service endpoint that it's going to. And so this is just one logical line, you know, point to point cross connect between them as far as they're concerned. Um, and so that's the view that the network service clients and the network service endpoints have in the world. Now the network service daemons, the NSMDs that are running on each node, in the single node case, you know, they have a different view of the topology, right? From the point of view of the NSMD, you've got a network service client. It has a, um, it has a connection, a local connection into the data plane. The data plane has a cross connect that cross connects that to a different local connection that is going to the network service endpoint. And that's the way the NSMD sees the world topologically for things on the same node. For things on different nodes, when you've got the multi-node case, what it looks like to a particular NSMD is, I have a network service client, it is a local connection to a data plane. I should put the cross connect in here as well. Apologies, I should fix that in the picture. But it essentially hits a, a similar cross connect to a remote connection. Um, and the remote connection can be something like VX, a VXLAN tunnel. Right, and those are the points of view of those components: the network service client or network service endpoint, and the way the NSMDs see the topologies they understand. Uh, I have one question that, if if you allow me, so essentially, my understanding is that the cross connecting is not part of the data plane itself, right? Well, the cross connect happens in the data plane. Uh, okay, I mean, at, at least the 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 cross connect object that we are creating. It's not oh, part oh, of well, it, it, yeah. So the cross connect object we're creating, effectively, the cross connect object, um, the NSMD, when it talks to the data plane, it simply says, "Please create these cross connects from me." You know, I've had a connection over here and a connection over there. Please link them into yourself and cross connect them. And okay. then the cross connect objects that are coming northbound, they come northbound from the data plane once that's finished, because now we've got them. And then they come up from the NSMD towards your topology monitoring. And I think I have a picture for that subsequently as well. Okay. So, uh, is it, uh, yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, 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 is it always a point to point connection or, uh, oh, yes. I mean, uh, it's not uh, like the cross connect is not kind of bridge or any other logic, it's just. If you need a bridge, if you need a bridge, a bridge is a network service. Oh, okay, good, okay. Yeah. So you can totally have all the bridges you want, um, but that's a network service. And, and this actually turns out to be phenomenally helpful because bridges are complicated. Um, and so by making the bridges a network service, number one, we basically, um, network service mesh itself doesn't have to deal with that complication. It just has to get things to that network service. And then the second thing that, that actually is kind of important from a sociological point of view is there are a bunch of people competing in the bridge space we don't want to compete with them. They're doing all kinds of wonderful things. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, and so yes, if you have a bridge, we can connect you to your bridge, but we ourselves do not provide a bridge. Okay, thanks. Cool. Um, <clears throat> and then the, sort of the last topology view is what things look like topologically at the view of the cluster. And this is probably what you'd want to bubble up to skydive in some sense. <clears throat> so from the cluster point of view, essentially you've got a network service client it has a local cross connect to a data plane where it hits a cross, you know, where it gets cross connected to a remote con uh, connection, which goes over whatever your underlay is, you know, the remote connection might be VXLAN. Then it comes into the data plane on node two and it gets cross connected to a local, connect cross a local connection to the network service endpoint on node two. So uh, th this is one of the things I think that makes it simpler is different parties in this have a different view of the topology. The network service clients and network service endpoints have a super simple topological view. It's a point to point view, right? Um, at the level of an NSMD, the NSMD only really understands the stuff happening on its nodes. So its topological view is not all that complex either. And then when you knit them together at the level of the cluster, then you get this slightly more complicated view of how the topology comes into existence. Does that make sense? But just uh, from the uh, NSM view, uh, you will be able to to know uh, which uh, which uh, which uh, endpoint you are connected to. So from the NSM point of view, you know the name of the network service endpoint that you're connecting to. Hmm. 
Okay. Um, you don't necessarily know where, you, you know the name of the network service endpoint and you know what network service manager is managing it. Um, you don't necessarily know, you know things about it like, is it using MemIOF? Because if you're, if you're dealing with a remote case, that's not your problem. So you know, you know there's just the, the identifier of the endpoint? Yeah, you know the network service endpoint identifier, correct. Okay. Um, whether it's local or remote. Cool. And then the, the other question that came up was in talking to David, he sort of asked, started asking questions about the flow of packet through all of this, which in, turned into a whole series of slides that I think are probably helpful. So I, I've used the smiley face as the packet because it makes me happy. So a packet originates in the network service client. <clears throat> it goes over the local connection of that network service client which is the only part the network service client actually sees of this chain. It gets to the data plane. The data plane cross connects it to whatever the remote connection is, which typically involves putting an end cap around it. So I put an end cap around our smiley face. You know, that thing goes over whatever your underlay is, <clears throat> which then arrives at the data plane on the other end where it gets decapped. Then it gets cross connected to the local connection of the network service endpoint and gets delivered to the network service endpoint. And then the last slide, the one I think David has questions about, I went full ideographic programming um, because you know, he was asking sort of how this related to things. And so you've got the network service da uh, daemon, it exposes the monitor cross connect um, API, which will stream back a bunch of cross connects when Skydive probe asks it. And those cross connects are just, you know, a cross connect, which I've represented with a little diamond, is just a payload type, which is Ethernet, and information about a source connection, and information about a destination connection. And it gets one cop one view of this from node one. It gets another view from node two. The thing that's going to be true is the des the connection here to the destination, it's going to be the same with both reports. So the cross connect that gets reported from node one, it will have a different local source because it is different locally, but it will have the same remote connection that we get from node two. So when you've got remote connections between NSMDs, it will be the same connection object on both sides, whether it's source or destination. Uh, do they have the same ID? Yes, they will have the same ID. Okay, same ID, different source, and the same destination and payload, right? Right, right. And they will be different cross connects because NSMD has its notion of a cross connect. Uh, uh, and uh, by the way, the payload is just a string of Ethernet or? It is, I believe it is at this time, yes. Okay, so currently we only support Ethernet, right? No, we can, we can support other things. Oh, okay. Um, but the, 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 the truth of the matter is, I, for your point of view, I think it's just information you would report. Um, it should match between both sides. Now, one thing I do want to be cautious about with this picture is it's, the, it's not the destinationness that makes the connections the same. This could be flowing the, you know, you would have things. It, it's not the destinationness, it's the remote connectionness that makes things, um, you know, that, that makes this connection match. So, sorry, could you repeat that? It's the destination this that makes this connection match because actually. Uh, yes, okay. Yeah, because oh. actually from, from and I, I've, I've screwed this up, I need to correct this. Um, from the point of view of NSM2 for the cross connect, the source is the remote connection and the destination is the local connection. Ah, uh, yes, makes sense. Yes, yes. And I apologize, I screwed that up in the picture the first time. And, and what about the ID? I mean... What about the what? What about the ID, the, the cross-connect ID? So the cross-connect IDs will be different because oh, they're okay. different objects. Like this cross-connect is different than that cross-connect. Uh -huh. But this that connection, this remote connection between them is the same thing. So from the point of view of node one, its destination and its cross connect goes out as a um, remote connection. From the yeah. point of view of node two, its source comes in from a remote connection 
and those remote connections are the same on both sides. They'll have exactly the same parameters. Okay, so that means that I will have a list of, I mean, two lists of cross connects that one list is from source to destination and uh, I mean from, from local to remote and the second one is from remote to local and they may be out of order. So that means I may need to pair them together. Yes. <clears throat> one other thing to be cautious of, which mm. is authority by which connection IDs get issued, right? So the connection ID is always, you know, connection IDs are always created where you are going, right? So if I am a NSM1 and I request a remote connection from the, from, from the NSMD on node two, it's the NSMD on node two that will be creating the connection ID. And the connection ID is only guaranteed to be global, to be unique within the context of node two. So you, uh, need, you will need to know what NSMD you got it from and, okay. and the, the connection ID because those two are what uniquely identify it within the cluster. Okay, 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 okay. So here comes the second question that I noticed that you put the skydive probe outside the cluster. Oh, it doesn't have to be. I just didn't want to make, I, 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 this was an artifact of the fact that if I make the cluster bigger then I don't know what to do with oh, it. Okay, so skydive <laughs> is also on it. Okay, but uh, so is it a daemon set that each node have a skydive pod or there is only one probe? That's entirely up to you guys. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys can decide how you want to do that. Um, you know, how, how you want to do how you want to do that, because actually either architecture is viable. Um, you just have to decide what it is you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ed, Ed, super extremely helpful. Now, I'd also like to see where this monitor cross-connect server and client would be located. Sure. And, uh, and, and uh, I guess David and uh, the Skydive colleagues, yeah, figure, uh, determine where you think the best place for the, for the probe would be, and we would want to include that in an architecture uh, picture. Again, just so everybody has context about these movies. So I, I, I would actually, I would suggest we do the following thing, because I think we were running out of time on this call, which is um, if the folks involved in this want to do a chat on IRC after this, we can hammer out these things, I think, pretty quickly. Um, and I know, among other things, for example, that, that David has done some really nice sequence diagrams that I think elucidate some of what you're discussing as well. Okay, I'm down with that. Uh, thanks, Ed. Cool, excellent. Matthew, David, are you, you done with continuing this conversation on the IRC channel after this call? That's okay. Excellent. Cool. So Frederick, back to you. Great. So going back and... Uh... Yeah, quickly, uh, qu question. Do you have a link for that document you just showed? Um, paste it in here somewhere. I seem to have lost it. Uh, it's it is actually oh, okay. multiple slides. Yes, got it. That's also linked from the issue. Cool. Okay, Frederick, really back to you this time. Right. So uh, we have as well uh, some work being done to the uh, network service mesh data plugin. So uh, looking to dynamically expand the uh, pool of device IDs um, and do a very variety set of refactoring in order to make that uh, better and more stable. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that we're starting to focus on as well, now that we have uh, these various components up and running, is also eliminating uh, race conditions between which one should start up. So for example, if the data planes uh, starts up for NSM or should NSM start up for the data plane? And uh, we, we believe that it shouldn't matter which one spins up first, that they should just do the right thing. And so there's work done in order to, in order to make that happen. Um, 
There is also work in progress for creating a VPP agent, uh, NSC, that uses MemIF to perform its work. And um, finally, uh, more work continues to be done on the VXLAN mechanism. So, so I, I know I, I know you got a patch in Nikolai just before this call. I yeah. just taking a look at it. Um, so far, it looks good. I just need to digest it. Yeah, it's just not not tested. I mean, I just followed whatever the other guys were doing, trying to apply the VXLAN logic there, and this is what I got. Yeah, any review will be helpful. Cool. Uh, it might be worth you pinging Ilya on the IRC channel. He's done a lot of, of sort of data plane testing stuff. He may have some interesting ideas on how you could try and test it. Okay, good. I will. Thank you. Cool, cool. Great. So I um, so moving on from the uh, from the project board. So we've already gone over the uh, the slides. So we'll uh, dive directly into. Uh, well, we've already we've already spoken about the architectural picture. Is there anything in, is there anything more we want to say about that? I don't think so. I think uh, the uh, IRC channel will hash uh, some of these questions out. Okay, great. Uh, CNCF network service VNF and CNF data plane benchmarks and comparisons. Uh, Taylor, you're listed as the uh, person for this, so you have the floor. I meant to change that mouthful. Um, <laughs> you can make it longer if you like. I don't mind. No. <laughs> That's a little bit shorter. <clears throat> okay. So I could, do you want me to bring up a board, share my screen? Might be helpful visually. Sure, sure. Let me just, let me stop sharing, then you can share. Okay, cool. Kind of on the same thing. We get a lot in motion. Um, a lot done, and there's a lot in motion <clears throat> with the OpenStack. Um, the biggest thing that we have right now is on this, the VPP Neutron driver. So if anyone is, there's not a lot checked off here, but there's a lot that's happening on this code base. This one's really the biggest blocker for the OpenStack side. So if if there's anyone that's on the call or you know anyone that's familiar with this Neutron driver <clears throat> that uh, uses VPP as the vSwitch for OpenStack, then uh, please speak up or shoot me a message. He's working, Robert is working through issues, um, trying to debug stuff. It works in, the, in a dev stack, single node. It's not working on the Chef deployed, like the official Chef deployed OpenStack, hasn't tested on the Cola, which would be another one, container-based install. We're trying to work out the bugs on that. And most of the rest of the OpenStack should be done, um, but we haven't had a lot of chance to test because of this. And let's see. We have a lot happening with regard to the Kubernetes side. So if I come back in here, I posted some. So on the Kubernetes side, we have clusters deploying with layer two working. So you can have the packet. So this is specifically on packet. So on packet, you can deploy a Kubernetes cluster and have the layer two switch set up as well as the worker node. We've done the implementation in a way that we could take out the host worker node stuff and plug in NSM. One area that we need to figure out and talk with uh, y'all at some point about would be, how are we going to work with the packet switch side? And most of what we were thinking for NSM is worker node. They're still setting up the packet switch, which is what, at least what we want from bare 
from zero to a working cluster. So that'll be a discussion we need to figure out how is that going to be handled. It's currently not handled in the Terraform uh, packet plugin. We're having to do it external. We're going to contribute back to that. So anyways, need to figure that out. Um, the templating for the VPPV switch to support the different topologies, um, we're in, that's in progress and trying to figure out how to make it the most usable between Kubernetes and OpenStack since we're comparing. Um, that's the Ansible side. We have scripts that can reconfigure all of it for um, Docker. Most of the previous work was Docker KVM. That's all of the CSIP packet testing. <clears throat> so trying to make it work for Kubernetes. And likewise, the Helm charts. So there's some issues with like CPU pinning and the dynamic configuration, the way that they're implemented right now. So if, if we went into this code base, a lot of the way this is set up, again, was for the KVM and Docker, uh, Docker setup. So we can reconfigure these containers on the fly to make it work. And there's a lot of things in here that we can take advantage of for tuning with Docker and KVM. And we have to find how do we do those things in Kubernetes. So stuff like the policies for um, how the CPUs are allocated and stuff don't quite give us the um, specific things that we were using for tuning before to actual core IDs. So figuring those out and what parts can go into the Helm charts, what parts need to go outside, and trying to make that as clean as possible so that once we have in a sim in place, the whole solution is going to be more of the Kubernetes way. Um, so anyways, um, cluster looks good, and now it's the pieces that run on the cluster is the focus. Once we have the Helm charts, we're going to be creating the different uh, topologies that we're deploying. So the snake case where it's going to go through the V switch as well as the pipeline. Um, I think I have, I don't know if anyone on this call has seen, but here's a quick overview of what we're looking at. So this is like a snake case where you're going to, in OpenStack, you're going to go through the VM and back out to the V switch. This is VPP. And then on uh, Kubernetes, we'll do the same. And then we'll have the optimized version where we can go from container to container or pod to pod for the, um, the best case scenario. So that's what we're targeting as far as the, those topology cases. Um, on the dev side that's affecting everything in packet, one of the big problems that we've run into is limitations on how to configure VLANs for the switches. Um, depending on how you do assignments and stuff, it can change the way the switch is configured, including does it send the VLAN tags back to the server? Does it not? Is it access port mode? We have maximum of 12 VLANs. If we try to do sharing, we've run into issues where we can't assign the same VLAN to multiple ports, um, at least via the web UI. It seems to be available in the API. So there's a lot of weird limitations in the visibility there. Um, so trying to document all those and find the workarounds to make it work in packet. I think that's it right now. Um, there's a lot of new documentation that's been pushed up. Ed Kern did a first round for the end user documentation, what we're expecting if someone doesn't know the project and wanted to come in and try to re redo the results on packet. So here's what you would do and walk through. So we have this first round. Um, we're going to keep filling it out. We also have we've pushed up a lot of documentation on using the individual components. Like this is how to use the traffic generator with NFE bench and stuff. So this could be useful for other folks that want to use those. This would work if 
you have your own Kubernetes cluster and want to use NFT Bench to run traffic against it, you could spin this up and then go create whatever scenarios you want in a NFE bench. And we've also put some stuff like the issues we've seen with the BIOS and other things on the packet machines for the quad Intel NICs. What do we need to do? How, what do we set up with Grub? All of these things. So trying to make more of that the tips and other things that we've seen in packet and all the testing available for others. That's it for me and, no, and nothing f right now for NS like requesting help immediately um, on the Kubernetes side. The one thing again would be anyone that knows um, VPP and OpenStack, that would be the, the biggest area to help for that Neutron plugin. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I've, uh, I'll see if I can find anyone um, who, as well, I'll look to my contacts and see if I can find anyone who knows uh, BPP Neutron. Well, that that would be the fast data stacks project on OPNFE, as well as the uh, networking VPP project on OpenStack. Okay, that's um, let's go ahead and add that as uh, perhaps we can reach out and see if they're willing. Yeah, to and our, I just checked. I don't have their RC, IRC channels online to see who might be listening at the moment and talk to them in a while. Yeah, and in, in the long run, we, we also want to have a uh, uh, some form of an integration with uh, with OpenStack and Network Service Mesh, and so you know be able to cross that bridge between Kubernetes and Neutron and back again. And so uh, it'd be good to start making some connections there in the in the near future. Um, okay, with that, uh, I think that. Uh, yeah, there, there's nothing else left on the agenda. We have three minutes left. Are there any last minute uh, things or questions that anyone has? Great, well in that scenario, I'll yield you back two and a half minutes of your time. Thank you everyone for attending and we will see you at the same time next week. Cheers. Goodbye. Thank you guys. Bye.